And, of course, we mentioned Tim Floyd. His 10th year overall, but his second at Iowa State. Tim Floyd, a name that comes up in tons of rumors of late. We'll talk about that as the night goes on. New leagues. He's a couple years older. They'll be going against each other tonight. Pratt unable to make the catch, and the Cyclones turn it over on their first possession. He will be the point guard, and he will be the one who has to recognize the many different defensive looks that Iowa State will give over the course of the game. Gray comes up shooting, partially blocked, and picked off. Does not allow game distractions to distort his play. Good look underneath, and Bankhead with the first bucket of the game. He can't make the three stick. Cato up there for the rebound. Holloway. Willoughby, strong move to the bucket. Mike, when Willoughby gets that ball on the left side of the floor, nine out of ten times, he's going to drive to the basket. He's an unusual player. He's right-handed, and he loves to drive to his left. Kenny Pratt picks up that reach-in foul. Kenny Pratt is first personal foul. Team foul number one. Tim Floyd, coach of the year in three different conferences. American South, Sun Belt, and Big Eight. And this is a guy who... And here comes Willoughby. Willoughby. No, here comes Bankhead on the break. He's got Holloway with him. Finds him back to Bankhead. Reaching foul is going to go on McQueen. 1995 freshman of the year. The Pac-10. Right now, Mike, on the floor for the Cal Bears, they have three go-to players, Raheem, Ed Gray, and Tremaine Folks. And actually, all three of these young men were freshman players of the year in, in their conferences. Ed Gray was freshman player of the year in the Southeast Conference. Fifteen forty-eight left to go in the first half here at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. Iowa State seventy-five percent three out of four, and Cal just one of six. Holloway, Bankhead, Willoughby. With so much of Iowa State's offense being geared toward Willoughby. You would think some teams would play Iowa State a box and one. Here's Holloway. Cato wants the ball inside. They get it to him. Goes to work and Abdul Rahim gets the roll. Second bucket for Kelvin Cato tonight. Is a steal by Willoughby for two. And a traveling violation on McQueen. When Cal is taking the ball out of bounds, Raheem must run the baseline. He's standing stationary. And even worse, he's standing stationary under, behind the backboard. He must move in there. Run the baseline. The Cyclones are aptly named at the moment. They're up 11-3. Holloway, Bankhead's calling for the ball. Turn. Oh, and foul. Sean Bankhead was guarded by Ed Gray on that play. And Ed Gray and Sean Bankhead played together at the College of Southern Idaho. He said, Ed, we were... Sean Bankhead looking for the three-point play. run now for the Cyclones. Tremaine folks used the, the rim as a shield as he went up for that power move and as a result Cato could not get his hand into the shooting pocket. Willoughby backs it out. Nice little crossover move trying to dip it inside. Loose out of bounds. Last to touch it was Cato. Dick Paparo with the emphatic call down there on the baseline. Just about six minutes have gone by in this game, and Sharif Abdul Rahim has only taken one shot. Holloway with 
the set play outside. Cal's getting a lot of early offensive opportunities. They've got to finish those plays. Pratt won't stay down for him. Pratt goes and gets it in traffic, too. That's what he does best. Cyclones by... Sacrificing height for defensive quickness and maneuverability. Randy Duck, Cal's ace defender. Pratt. Oh! Two. Point game at 18-12. Pratt. Edwards down low for two. Play Edwards. To 16, it's a four point game. Here's Willoughby, who's been relatively quiet the last four or five minutes. Pratt, who seems to think he can take Gonzalez every time, and you can see why. Kenny Pratt has. Cal's offense thus far has been a lot more productive in transition than it's been in its half-court offense. Perfect timing then, Mike. Offensive team, Mike. When they're forced to play half-court offense, it reduces their athletic ability and it brings into play their decision-making ability. It goes Willoughby strong to the hole. A every, game of runs in Iowa State's on one right now. Every scouting report in the Big 8 will tell you that Willoughby, when he gets the ball on the left side of the basket, he likes to penetrate along the baseline. Folks will take it outside. Comes up short. Holloway picks it off. Gets it ahead to Willoughby. Willoughby's going to take it and make it. Nine points all of a sudden for Willoughby, and Todd Bozeman is going to take a 20-second timeout. 7.48 to go in the half. Iowa State back up by 11. Mike, this is second year in a steam lead with about 7.30 to go here in the first half. Willoughby a perfect 4 for 4 from the floor. And coach, you were telling me the last couple of days that there'll be periods where Abdul Rahim doesn't get the ball. He's not touching it much tonight. Well, he only he had his season low in the last regular season game against Arizona. He only had nine points. He only attempted one field goal in the first 12 plus minutes. It's time that the Cal Bears introduce themselves to their star. And that was the case of Cal just having no clue what was going on with the shot clock. None. Well, first of all, that should have taken place during the timeout. One of the assistant coaches should have instructed the players how much time there was left on the shot clock. They well might have done it, but if they did, from the time they left the huddle to the floor, the players forgot it. Iowa State dominating inside. They're back in that four corners, Mike. They spread that offense. Tim Floyd just called the set play, a double screen up high for Holloway. Bankhead wants the ball down low. Martin to three. Go Martin, three points. Cal now has Jelani Gardner and Randy Duck in the, in the backcourt. That tells me Jelani Gardner moves to the point. Willoughby. And the ball is coming back to Cal. I think it was Folks who came in from behind and got the block on Cato. Iowa State had an earlier 10 nothing run. Dave Gardner touching it first time in the offensive end, gives it to Stewart. As Todd Bozeman has gone deep into the bench now. Kenny Pratt is just smothering Raheem with his defense in there. When he goes to the low post, he fronts him. When he tries to come outside, he beats him to the spot. Four on the shot clock. And Willoughby with the strip on Folks. He knew exactly what Folks had to do. Bankhead the bucket in the bucket. 
Thank you. Abdul, but he's he's being him up. Right now he has handcuffs on him. Holloway. JC Holloway. JC Holloway, his first two. The lead goes to 14. The ball is tipped. Comes right to Moderman. He gets it quickly to Holloway, and he gets it across the line. And a 20-second timeout is called by Tim Floyd. Just about four minutes to play here in the first half, and Iowa State has dominated the first 16 minutes against Todd Bozeman and the Cal Golden Bears, led by Sean Bankhead with eight and Dedrick Willoughby with nine. Iowa State has had a 10-0 run, a 10-2 run, and they're getting a lot of easy baskets, Coach. Well, in their half-court offense, they're getting easy baskets because they do such a good job of screening and using screenings. The timing is impeccable. Defensively, they're creating a lot of easy baskets for themselves with deflections. 65% shooting to this point for the Cyclone. And there's a backcourt. Holloway tried to tightrope that line, and he just couldn't keep his balance. Lonnie Gardner is covered by Bankhead. Bankhead is very, very difficult to take off the dribble. Duck comes up shooting off the screen and rattles home a three. Second field goal for Duck. The lead to 11. Willoughby, nice ball fake, pulls up for the jumper. That's going to be short. Rebound taken down, and those are the kind of mistakes that are really hurting Cal right now as Jelani Gardner sticks out of bounds. 34-23, Cyclones by 11. It's an 11-point game, 34-23. Iowa State with the lead. 317 to play here in the first half, and the Cyclones have dominated this game. Sharif Abdul Rahim only one field goal attempt in the first 17 minutes of this. Cal has gone to, to a, a zone, Mike. It's a 1 2 2 zone. Cato, no. Cato. <laughs> Right now for the Cal Bears, it's important that they get this down to single digits. Oh, and a block by Cato. Kelvin Cato is dominating this basketball game at both ends, Mike. Kelvin Cato back there because you can get up and pressure the ball. If you get beat, you know you got a fly swatter back there in Cato. He'll correct your defensive mistakes for you. Single digits. Gardner's going to take it. Rebound taken by Holloway. Lead pass to Pratt. That's going to cost Cal big time. Count the bucket. By shot. Slow transition defense. And an absolutely dumb foul. The reaction by the coach. Bank head back in. Iowa State on a roll. The roll that took them through the Big A tournament continues as Pratt makes the free throw. Edwards defensively out on Gardner. Down to four. Gardner takes a long three. No. Rebound. Trapped around, and Moderman got fouled. And he will go to the line with four tenths of a... Moderman unable to convert the front end, but otherwise it 
was all Iowa State. That's the end of the first half. With the score, Iowa State 43 and Cal 29. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. It's extremely important that Cal gets Sharif back into his offensive rhythm. Bankhead. Inside Edwards. Nice move. A 20-second timeout as his halftime lead is disappearing faster. It's down to 8, 45, 37. Tim Floyd is going to use a timeout. 16-13 to go in the game. A 13-2 run, and it's 45-42. Creates nice gaps for you to dribble into. If help comes down in the post area, you pitch to the corner for the wide open jump shot. There it is, right there. Bankhead. Textbook basketball by the Cyclones. Eight by three on the ball. Willoughby leans in. Can't get it to go off the glass. There's press. He's going to get to the line. Boy, he is a tough kid in traffic. Tremaine Folks picks up his second personal foul, the third. State's goals each game is to go into the game with the goal to get to the foul line more than their opponents. Something they do well. They do it very well. Rebound loose. Edwards goes to the floor to try to keep it alive. And Pratt is going to be called for the foul on Fultz. Near the conclusion of... There's a new season high. He's got 21. It's 47-46. Cal's all the way back. And Abdul Rahim still sitting there with five points, Coach. Willoughby. Abdul Rahim did a nice job staying in touch with Moderman. Iowa State down to 10 now on the shot clock. Willoughby the leaner goes. Boy, I... And that was why I hesitated. Yeah, they did. This is a big gamble for Tim Floyd. Kenny Pratt has four fouls. 11.20 to go. Inside, Pratt, yes! And Gonzalez got him over the back. Tony Gonzalez is first personal foul. That's just the first on Tony Gonzalez. Cal, literally foul free here. Pratt, Cato, and Edwards. And that's the paint patrol right there for Iowa State. And what that should tell the Cal Bears is that the interior of the Cyclone defense is weakened. They must start to exploit that by getting the ball down inside. And they now Bear will decide to exploit the four fouls on Kenny Pratt. Count the bucket from Willoughby, and Duck picks up a foul. All now for Dedrick. All of Iowa State's out-of-bounds plays are designed to get the ball. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick switch here over to the southeast. 26 seconds to go. Virginia Commonwealth with the ball down three. Let's get there for the closing seconds. Gus Johnson, Quinn Buckner. 54-51. VCU trailing, but they do have the ball. They need a three-pointer to tie. On the floor for them, Chapel, Hamilton, Hopkins, Bird, and Patrick Lee. Here's Hopkins. They want to get to Sherman, but I see Lee making this play. Lee picks up his dribble. Yeah, he wanted to make that play. Chapel oh, he has to. thrown away. And they foul Hughes. And Hughes is a 79% foul shooter. Just lost the basketball that time to Patrick. Hamilton on the Rams, number five. 
So that is the seventh team foul against VCU. Barb Heitch heading to the line. Still a one possession basketball game. Hughes, 79% free throw shooter. Never have done. So with 11 seconds remaining, it's a two possession game. So they bring Marston in because Marston is an additional three point shooter for them. Mississippi State here, you don't foul. That's all you don't do. You don't foul, you don't make it easy to get a basket, but you don't foul either. Here's Lee for three. Long rebound to Wilson. Just throw Four up. seconds. And Darrell Wilson and the Mississippi State Bulldogs will advance to the next round, barring some kind of miracle by VCU. 2.8 seconds to go. Mississippi State knows that they, they've, they've kind of dodged the bullet here because they didn't play their best game. This was not the same team here that beat Kentucky. And the Chevrolet players of the game, Bernard Hopkins from BCU. And Bart Height, only eight points, three rebounds, but he did a good job hustling and settling this team down. He did, did a great job just giving them some energy and making some plays for them in the first half, including uh, a three. George Burt shot off the front of the rim and your final score. Mississippi State dodges a bullet. They hang on to win it. 58 to 51 to advance to the next round. Eric Dampier in foul trouble much of the game. Played well in the second half, but took the first half off. But they will go to the next round. So Mississippi State will wait to find out who they'll play as UCLA is all set to take on Princeton. Now let's go to New York where Jim Nance is standing by. So it was a struggle, but Mississippi State advances to the second round. We could have, folks, the largest glass slipper in the history of the first round. It's out in Albuquerque. Two minutes to go. Here's Tim Brando. Just there from Phil Hopkins, pointing to the head. Play smart. That's what the Catamounts have done all evening long. They've made the right play on the defensive end to keep them in this game. Yes, you have to be able to score points, but you want to get the possession. You want to make a stop on the Boilermakers if you get a chance. Pelham, 69% at the strength. On the year, they shoot for the lead right here. It does get heavier, doesn't it? <laughs> well, before you can make two in a row, you got to make one in a row to get the lead. But you know, he hit the back rim, not the front rim. That's a very good point, Tim. He was on line. Oh, the iron on time to Western Carolina there. Catamounts have had the lead in this game. Only one point at their biggest margin. hasn't missed a shot from the floor, but he hasn't had many touches. Miller looking to get to him, and the shot clock continues to wind down on Purdue. It becomes a nemesis for them. Miller, the offensive rebound. There's a good look. Brantley still hasn't missed. Excellent passes. Good hustle on the offensive glass for Brad Miller to come up with that ball to give the Boilermakers the lead. Brantley, six of six from the floor, but most of his shots from point blank range. McCullough, a baseline move. A tough luck missed for Jarvis Graham. And then the foul in frustration. 
This is just great hustle on the offensive end. The Boilermakers have been well tested throughout the season. You make an extra pass, good things seem to happen for this Boilermaker team. They're a team that averages 16 assists a game. Cullum just picked up his fourth foul. Brantley takes the seat. Foster back into the game. 107 remaining. Top seeded Purdue trying to avoid the unthinkable against 16th seeded Western Carolina. Opening round of the Western Regional. Already today, Drexel, a 12th seed, has knocked off Memphis. Roberts the dump down. Austin. Pulled down by McCullum. Get it across half court. Talk about it. I do not drive to work. I do not drive to get from point A to point B. I do not drive to run away from the world. I just love to drive. The new 1996 Monte Carlo. Personal space from genuine Chevrolet. The only card accepted at the 1996 Olympic Games. And the hat would be nice, too. Help. Are you doing the right thing? Help. Can you afford it? Help. What kind of strings are attached? Help. Suppose it doesn't work out. Help! You need some good advice before you commit to a cellular phone. <laughs> Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. Sunday to watch Muhammad Ali, still the greatest, in the fight of his life against the toughest opponent he ever fought, Parkinson Syndrome. Purdue nursing a very precarious two-point lead. And you think of McCollum, certainly he has to take the shot, but Jewel Fleming has nine assists and no turnovers. The sophomore from Woodleaf, North Carolina, figures to need to make yet another quality decision. He has to make a decision whether to give the ball to McCollum or whether to take the shot himself. He only has five points on the evening, but he has to try to find a score, find Joe Stafford, find Anquil McCollum. You see the game clock and shot clock differential. He winds down to near 10. McCollum will have to do it on his own. Rejected. Miller comes away with it. And the foul with 11.6 remaining. Might, might not be a bad foul. Take a look at McCollum as he's driving baseline. He had a chance to dish this ball off. This is a terrific defensive play by Roy Harrison. Not only to block the shot, but to keep the ball in bounds. This is a great hustle play. Harrison blocks the shot. Number 13, you see Kevin Cullum coming in on the left side of your screen. Could have dumped the ball down inside, chose to take the shot. this time. Western Carolina gets one last opportunity. Fleming. Stafford. Oh, 
the historic significance of that final sequence etched on the faces of the Catamounts. They decided not to utilize the final timeout with that little time remaining. But you want to try to get the ball up court and you want to get a good look at the basket. You don't need a three-point shot. All you need to do is tie the score. Miss the outside shot, but you've got time to get it up again. Doesn't go down. So Purdue perseveres and remains in the NCAA tournament field as a top seed, but not without a tremendous effort from 16th seeded Western Carolina. Just a roll off from a victory. Our genuine Chevrolet players of the game, and Paul McCullum from Western Carolina and Chad Austin from Purdue. In celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for the academic achievements and to assist those in financial needs. So the brackets look this way. Purdue number one and surviving, beating Western Carolina. Georgia and Clemson will take on the winner, provided the outcome of that game, and Drexel will meet Syracuse on Saturday. For Derek Dickey, Tim Brando, it has been enjoyable and nearly historic as we take you back to New York and Jim Nance. What a game. Thank you, Tim. The kids from Cullowee, North Carolina, what heart. Almost getting fitted for the largest glass slipper in the history of the first round. Let's go to the finish out in Providence. Arkansas, 79 to 70 with 131 remaining. This is third The number 12 seeded Razorbacks in the East region about to bury the Penn State Nittany Lions, the five seeds. Nine points, 131 to play. Made has 18 points. Making that foul shot makes it a four possession game. That means Penn State has to score three points each time down, four possessions, and not let Arkansas score. Tough task. Yes, three nails another. 11 points. Lead the lead for Arkansas. Secunda for Lasicki. Rushed his shot. Booth got the rebound, and Booth gets two with a little hook shot. 16 points for the freshman Calvin Booth. Penn State thought they pried it loose without a foul, but they did not. Good defense by Arkansas. They're overplaying the three-point land. They can't lose given deuces. They can possibly lose if they gave threes. Fourth personal on Secunda. And that little buzz from the crowd is that Purdue score over Western Carolina. Close call for the Boilermakers. One seed in the West. Towns at the line for Arkansas. It's been a very good victory for the Razorbacks of Arkansas. An 18 and 12 team out of the SEC tied for third. Certainly folks in Minnesota thought maybe their team ought to be here instead of Arkansas. Clem Haskins a little bit upset. Yeah. But uh, they have earned their way into the second round. It would appear. And they'll await the winner of Marquette and Monmouth. Earl at the free fly. Misses. Gathered in on the rebound by Robinson. Is that a big night for Arkansas? Well, our genuine Chevrolet players of the game, Kareem Reed from Arkansas, 19 points, five assists, five steals, a freshman leading the way, Matt Gaudio, great leadership, 17 points and six rebounds, brought him back in the second half, shooting help from his teammate Pete Lisicki from three-point range, but Gaudio, the guy who gave him the heart to close it to seven after they were down by 18. But Arkansas withstood the challenge in the driver's seat with 105 to go. Tank Robinson will take two shots now. He's really a god in a grown-up body. He was a freshman on the national championship team two years ago. Robinson missed 13 games this season with a foot injury and was a little slow coming back to things, but really assumed the leadership role with this freshman lineup of four freshmen and one junior. He is the leader. 10-point game again, Arkansas. Yeah. Booth. Yeah. 
Hoffman, another little short hook, cuts it to eight again. Get into Reed's hands, you break it. There it goes, and away he goes, Mr. Superman. Well, and he's tackled there by Lasicki. Actually, he just made such a, a clever move on Reed that uh, Lasicki fell onto him. 82 to 74. Lasicki zigged when Reed zagged. Reed will go to the line again here Saturday afternoon against the winner of Mark Kevin Monmouth. There's Nolan, their main man, 84 to 676 is in front of Penn State, headed to another upset, a 12 seed over a five. Drexel had an even bigger one, knocking out Memphis earlier tonight in first round play. Penn State ranked number 18 in the country, the final AP poll coming into the tournament. The biggest upsets of the tournament are on Saturday and Sunday. After Saturday and Sunday, you pretty much can go by the chalk. Booth picks up his fourth. There's that Drexel score, 75 to 63, over a highly regarded Memphis team. It seems, Tim, every year that the 12th team seems to grab a, a fifth-seeded uh, team. We have two already in this tournament. Put at the line, 35.1 seconds oh, remaining. Well, Hood is getting good foul practice. Yes, he the is. worst foul shooter. He's running the line. He's been making them all, too. Yeah, he's hot tonight. He's relaxed, making he's, the plays. He's in the zone from the foul line. Well, we've advanced Arkansas in to the second round to meet the winner of the next game, the final game of the night match. Marquette, the 20th-ranked Golden Eagles against the Monmouth Hawks of the Northeast Conference. West Long Branch, New Jersey. Earl driving and turned back by Robinson. And then Gaudio. Well, I guess he stepped out. Hood stepped on the line at Penn State ball. Calvin Booth. That's Calvin Booth. 20 points for that big, good-looking freshman, 6'11". What a star he's going to be for Penn State. Has to get to the weight room for a little bit more strength on those shoulders. Just the freshman. Lasicki picks up the foul, sending Bradley to the line. We mentioned earlier Bradley from nearby Everett, Massachusetts, a suburb of Boston. Just up the road a little bit north, about an hour from here. And all his friends and family enjoying dinner with him last night in an Italian restaurant here in Providence. And what a thrill it must be for him particularly. And all the folks here to cheer him on. Freshman who escaped from the clutches of North these teams that uh, overlooked them. And he chose Arkansas. Great scouting by Nolan Richardson. He's actually looking at another ball player and caught the, uh, Bradley caught the eye of Coach uh, Nolan Richardson who uh, wrote down little gold stars with each good play that he saw from the player. And Bradley wound up to four. That was enough to get Nolan's attention. Gaudio. Cuts it to six, but 14.8 seconds. All that's left. 19 points for Gaudio. And he fouls out. Matt Gaudio, who came back this year after missing 1995 with a serious back injury, was going to pack it in, give up basketball, and taking his tour here as the senior with a word of encouragement for the players who will remain on the floor fine young man from Fallensby, West Virginia he gets a standing ovation from the Penn State fans here in the Civic Center classy guy and a great leader 19 points nine rebounds in his final game at Penn State the score doesn't really tell the game. The last 14, 15 minutes of the game were governed by Arkansas. Uh, they made one run at them with about five minutes to go, uh, Penn State, but couldn't maintain it from the outside. They had a score from the outside to stay in this ball game. Towns will be at the line. You know, those moments like that, a senior playing his last game, he's in the tournament, obviously uh, respected highly by his teammates, his Penn State fans, the coaching staff. Well, those are the things that make this tournament so special. Uh, you know the pain he's feeling right now. He had physical pain a year ago, and tonight he's suffering emotional pain. As Penn State will be upset by the 12 seeds from Arkansas. 
to Danny Earl. Missing badly on a three, and Kareem Reed. And Secunda both going to the sideline for the loose ball, but it's off the hand of Kareem Reed. You know, those long uh, shorts that Arkansas wears, they make uh, Reed seem even shorter. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> <laughs> He can play the game, and that's it. Zeros are up. Arkansas, the 12 seed with a six-point win over the Nittany Lions of Penn State, and they advance to the second round to await the winner of Marquette and Monmouth. Now let's take you back to our studios in New York and Jim Nance. All right, Tim, they led by as much as 18 in the second half. Hold on the win. Remember, Arkansas and Cal were the last two teams to get at-large selections into the tournament. Arkansas proved it belonged, and now Cal's mounting a late charge against Iowa State. And they're going to a timeout as uh, Cal just scored on the inside. Break it down to 69-64. That was a 12-point lead about a minute ago. We're going to take a timeout with them and pick up the play in Dallas when we come back on the road. Got a minute 26 to play. Iowa State clinging to a five-point lead. They've got the ball. Bankhead looking to inbound. And the foul is going to be on Jelani Gardner. That wasn't a bad foul at all. I was sitting here thinking at that timeout, Cal certainly had to be talking about who do we want to foul and when do we want to foul. Cal with the only timeout left. Todd Bozeman has been stopping the clock at every opportunity. Cal has never led in this game. They got to within one here in the second half after Iowa State had dominated the first 20 minutes. Holloway's their second best foul shooter. Oh, Rattles right. that one out. You got him on that one, Coach. Keeping my mouth closed on this one. Jermaine Folks fouled out of the game with 26 points. Holloway makes it a six-point game. Gardner, oh, threw it away. Cal gets lucky. It comes back to Duck. Gardner, no. Out of bounds. Iowa State ball with a minute 13 to go. You've got a minute and 30 seconds, Mike. You're down six points. Why are you rushing into your offense? Get some ball movement. Set some screens. Establish who you want the ball to go to. Iowa State has been living in these close games. Pratt. Well, that was a smart play. The bank hit. Cyclones have the floor spread. Now they need, Cal needs to get a foul here. I cannot understand why Cal has not, has waited so long to foul. Duck finally gives it after Cal had let about 20 plus seconds go. Mike, th this is foul. where the Cal Bears need floor leadership. The coach shouldn't have to tell the team that they need a foul in a situation like that. You've got to have leadership on the floor, and, and you understand time and score. They let too much time run off the clock before they decide to foul. <laughs> Willoughby unable to make them pay. It is still a two-possession game. It has been a rough first NCAA appearance for Sharif Abdul Rahim. Now Cal needs three scores. Well, it's been rough on Rahim because they, the Cal players do not understand that this is the player that can get him back into the basketball game. Jelani Gardner is called with an offensive foul. A player. Too many players on the Cal team have adopted the mentality late in the game, I'll get it done for us. This is a team game. You need five players to get the job done. And Iowa State understands that. Iowa State is advancing here. 73-64, they lead by nine. Gonzalez is going to let a three fly. Rebound taken down by Bankhead. Willoughby dribbles through a crowd. 
and gets fouled as he comes across half court. Bankhead's dunk will not count, but with 18 seconds to go, the Cyclone of Tim Floyd will play on. All right, so Iowa State's going to advance to the second round. Cal tried to mount the comeback, couldn't finish it off. For you folks out in Los Angeles, we're going to get you to the start of the 29th year.